Let's talk about content next. What is it? Where does it come from? What do we do with it? And how does Das Studio think about this? And how do we access it in our large, large and ever growing library? So that's maybe something important to remember. Das Studio is uh, something like a toolbox that lets us pick up items that are called content, like props, like, you know, tables, chairs, scenes, sets, people with clothing, with accessories and all that, backdrops, you know, epic landscapes and all that. We load all that in, we set up a camera, we put items together, put them into the vision that we have for a scene, and then we essentially shoot a picture with it. So that's what Das Studio is designed for, and it's what it's really good at. What it can't really do is manipulate these things very well. So there's only very limited tools inside Das Studio that let us manipulate content. So in that respect, that studio is more like a content assembly toolbox rather than a content manipulation software or a content creation software. Content creators do this in other tools, then import things into Das Studio and then do additional work so that it works with one click for our easy convenience. And that is what we call content. So as I said, it can be anything from custom characters in shapes that are usually based on the Genesis figure to anything like landscapes and backdrops and lighting sets and render settings, as well as interior scenes that will work with our characters. That's content, and typically you get it from the DAS store. They have a huge amount of choice of basically anything and everything that you could want and probably already have and probably will keep buying in the future because that's what makes it so much fun. I sometimes browse through the DAS store and I get really inspired by things that I'm thinking, oh, I'd love to build a picture with that. And then I buy the product, I explore it, and then that's how I create scenes. And it really inspires me to see other people's promo shots and just think about how I want my own story to be told in that set or with that character and so forth. I'm not going to cover how to install content here. I've done that elsewhere on my YouTube channel. I'm assuming you're already at that point where you have content in your library. I just wanted to show you where you access it and how you access it, because there's two ways of doing that inside Das Studio. And those are called the Smart Content tab that we've placed over here. And then we also have the Content Library tab, which is just below it in our current setup. And they work distinctly different. And I wanted to go through how either of them work and how we can access our content, where to find things. So let's start with the content library because that's the somewhat easier thing to understand. It's essentially a file browser like the Macintosh Finder or the Windows Explorer. It's literally just showing us locations on a hard drive and um, these little disclosure triangles here, they're essentially folders and we can go and drill into them and then go further into that. And here is where we see the files in those folders. So these are mapped folders. If I head over here into the DAS Studio formats, that's basically where it all begins. This is another folder hierarchy if you wanted to think about it. Since we're dealing with DAS content, this is where to find that under DAS Studio formats. If you open that, then you have a long list of other things. DAS Connect is something like an internal folder. We're not going to deal with that. Everything underneath here is a content library that I have mapped in DAS Studio. And so this one is the default one, my DAS 3D library. You may have another one that's called my library. Make a note of those things. And these are ones that I've added here. Those are just folders on my hard drive that I said, hey, this is where I'm going to store DAS Studio content. And we're going to talk about custom libraries when we get to saving content, because that's kind of important. It's an upcoming video. This one here, if I open that up, then I get a long list of things that are inside my folder. And you know what? I'm going to go and right click on this. And I'm going to choose Browse to Folder Location, just so that I can show you side by side what that actually looks like on the hard drive. So this is what Das Studio sees, and this is what Windows sees. So it's a folder in my public documents here. And here I have any blocks just like here, then I have animals just like here. I also have a data folder that the Windows Explorer sees, but that doesn't show in DAS Studio. DAS Studio will use this as an internal kind of data folder for things like geometry that's saved and other things that are kind of morph targets that are saved like that. And the other ones, they all show up, but data doesn't show up. So environments, general, and light presets and all that all shows up. I have an additional file here that does not show up in the other side here. So if there was a file in here, it would show here with an icon. So if we just go further here, and I'll just go and expand the people folder. This is where you usually find the characters. So if we go into, say, 
Genesis 8 female. I find my two icons here and they do indeed correspond. If I were to do the same thing here, I'll go into people, go to my Genesis 8 female, and then I can see that these icons are in fact the same. So the way Dash Studio stores this is by having a data file, which is the DUF file. And then on top of that, we have another file with the same name that ends in PNG. And that's the icon that's being shown. That's kind of how that works under the hood. If we go further down here, I can go maybe into characters, and then I can see all my characters that are installed. Each character that has subfolders and so forth, and this is how you access content. So each of these things I can already drag in. If I either go double click it, it'll show up in the center of the scene, or I can also left click and drag it into the scene. That also works. But it's important to understand, and I guess that's the point that I'm trying to make, this is just a file browser, and this is all we need to know about the content library tab. It cannot tell you what goes with what. So you could have, you'd have to go and browse to a character, load them in, then you'd go and maybe in here, go to the clothing folder, expand the clothing folder, then pick the vendor that you have. You can also make that a little bit bigger here and then say, you know, maybe basic wear is something you want to load. And then with the character selected, you'd load any of these things. So you can, you know, make it as, as big or as small as you need it to be. And so these are all, the way this is usually organized is that you have, it, everything goes from the people folder and then it goes into the Genesis generation and then it goes into either characters or clothing or things like anatomy. And then in the clothing, you have the vendor often or you have an outfit name. And then from there, you can go, so like CB Rycroft is the outfit name by the vendor. And then in here, you have the actual item that you want to load. And underneath there, you have materials. So it's a very intricate hierarchy that we would need to know about in order to browse content. But you can do it. And usually, if you buy third-party content from places that are not the DAS store, then they will be distributed in a way that you can browse them just like that. And often, usually, there is, normally, there is is a readme file that tells you where to find the content. So if you go and install that, the product should tell you what comes with it and where to find it. But it costs a lot of time to navigate content like that. And that is why I prefer the Smart Content tab, which works much like this, but also in addition has a database that it relies on to make connections between content. So for example, you could load in a figure and it knows which clothing content is compatible with that figure. Or you could load an item like a table and it would know which material presets are compatible with that table. So it kind of stands to reason that maybe this here, the Daydream dance dress material preset for the Rycroft outfit, which is a dress, is not compatible with a table or with a coat or with, you know, with a, with a jumbo jet or with a person. It's just not set up that way. These things have other material presets and also other requirements, I guess. And hence, a clothing material preset isn't going to work on that. But the content library doesn't know that. For it, it's just a file. And, you know, that's, that's kind of a problem. Whereas the smart content makes the connection between an object and what else goes with it and lets you go and show what can be fitted with it, what, what can be loaded it onto it and with it and what cannot. So let me just give you one more example. If I go and uh, we stick with the content library here just for one second, I'll go and close this. I've got other libraries here that are just mapped folders. I'll show you in a moment how to map those. But if I go to this one here, Vivian Pumps has the same thing. That's a product that my friend Chris made under Genesis 8 Female under clothing. I have his vendor name under there. I have his product name. And if I go and double click this, it goes and loads this product into the center of the scene. So that's the shoe product. Uh, actually, that's a pose that needs to go with it. Perfect. So if I go and expand that, I have some materials that I've made for these shoes. And if I go and say, use the yellow ones here, if I have the shoes selected on the right and I double click it, then you can see that the material changes on the shoes. But watch what happens if the shoes are not selected, like if I just select nothing and nothing selected, and I go and pick a different material preset like this, then I get an error message. And the error message says, hey, something, you know, didn't go so well. An error occurred while reading the file. See the log for more details. If you ever get that, and while we're talking about, you know, content and stuff like that, the log file is something that you might want to get acquainted with in, in Dash Studio. I'll just mention briefly where that is and how to get it, just because we had an error here. It is under Help Troubleshooting View Log File. So that'll open up a long text document at the end of which you get to see the error that's just occurred. So it just gets appended to 
as errors happen and as things happen, I mean, both good things as well as bad things, just a log file, like a computer log. If you've ever seen one, this is what it looks like. And there's a lot of stuff in here. If you go to the very bottom, and we should be able to see our issue here. Begin asset load, there it is. It's trying to load the file that I told it. And then it says determining missing assets, invalid node selection for material preset type. That's the actual problem. So I didn't have anything selected onto which something was supposed to be loaded. And you know, this thing was loaded and I just said uh, nothing worked. So that's what it's telling me. What it's not saying and what it what it means though is I'm really sorry, Jay, I've tried hard. It just it just didn't work out. It just didn't say it in so many words. So in case you have an error, even with rendering or whatnot, that's where to find it. But yeah, so this is how the regular content library works. Um, and the smart content works different. If I go and just delete this out of here and go over there, it is constructed in a similar fashion. So you have your product types and categories on the left hand side. And you can display this either by products or by files here at the top. So it depends on where you're on. And uh, smart content is currently only available from the DAS store and install manager and DAS central will both make it so that all content that you bought from there has smart content, which is which is seriously cool. So if I were to pick something like hair, for example, I click on this category and I see all the hair products that are currently installed on my system. And I can go and pick any of them and then load them into the scene that way. Typically you'd have a figure, but let's just stick with hair just to see how the how the smart content works here. Also pay particular attention to this little tick box at the bottom left where it says filter by content. I've unchecked that right now and we'll see why in a moment. So it's an important tick box to know about. Let me just stick with the first thing that pops into my head, which is the Abraham hair and mustache. If I double click that, then I see the hair items that come with this product, namely a load all. So that loads both a hair and a mustache. It's kind of a combined product. Or you can go and just load the hair or just the mustache. And then underneath here, we have materials for that product. You can open up and usually have two types of materials. If it isn't specified, if it's just under the hair folder here, then it means it's for 3D Lite. And if it's specifically an iRay material, then it's meant for the iRay rendering engine. So they are often called RSL, which means the render man shading language. And then the other ones are the MDL ones, the material definition language. They work differently and they're not compatible with one another. So good renders will usually give you both shaders so that you have a choice of render engine. We'll talk more about that when we talk about materials. So in here, I'm going to go and load my Abram hair in. Double click it and it comes and goes into the center of the scene. Here it is, just a hair prop, not a person. And with it, if I go out now, to like one step back, this is kind of the back button here, I can see that I could go into materials here as well. And currently I see all the products that have material presets available in my library. But smart content is clever enough to say, hey, if you want me to filter this down and not show you, you know, material for sunglasses or for a person, then click this button here, this uh, filter by context. So if I select that, watch what happens to my list of material files, they get whittled down into only two products now, namely the Abraham hair, which we know contains materials for this hair, as well as another product, which is the Sloshworks Colorworks Extreme Hair Texture Blending for Irene Defos hair. So it shows those two up because it knows these two products are compatible with whatever is currently selected in the scene. And that's kind of the, the magic formula behind this. If I go and unselect the hair, then this list changes here. If I untick this, then this list changes here. So it's a context sensitive thing. And this little spinning wheel means I'm currently querying the database. If you're into programming, it's a little database server that runs in the background at all times when Dash Studio is active or when Install Manager or Dash Central are active. It's kind of cool. So you select this and then you can filter by context whatever might belong to this product. And it's kind of nice because it works with figures, it works with clothing, it works in a way that shows you what clothing is compatible with which figure, what materials are compatible with which item. It's very, very handy and I use it all the time. And that's why I thought I wanted to show you how to do this in principle. And in the next video, we're going to have a look at how to do this with a person and get them fitted up with clothing.